magnify him magnify him glorify him Lord we worship you thank you for the privilege of access thank you for making yourself easy to walk with you made yourself easy to relate to we bless your great name we bless your great name can you just go ahead and pray in the spirit tonight yes liprosa fe kakte vonte baris meniga gansa fanter liprosta veminaita gazalambrate fensamino gonzasa sasante abraço contenda milabra yes yes allow your spirit man to rise up according to the move of god within your heart allow your spirit man to rise up let your spirit rise Kaparusa fratesemba lebara stane gaza susena mariga tata ta astante fembros gasusa branda barate anite la rasos asaina afavaras maraka patata tata ketembrata ketembrata astande bomba hasele Garuaga babalante fresh of home rumamba tena rumamba tena rumamba taras laruaga babante veni unda se saite esambro stema esambro makanderia laruaga vazizem beno opras kabamanta ba avesa pane avesa balanda brande cosa pentaria saita tare e kabombe naita Azam brote azam babaranta kafamoria brasu kambe katena ma karuana 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 ngata azanta babonte fras commentaria laban rusen saine usanta 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 katela rata para kanta tandemo ragiana mambara kansela Araga babalanta branta foma aruaga ntai repente tente tente rekete tete tete yekete tete tete yekete tete yakiana 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 kayash ala babalanta bro right hand up past right hand up past Stene Montaila, Afras Kabamanteria, Aruaga Babalanta, Araka Terra, Araka Terra, Araka Terra, Araka Terra, Kaya Shatai. Hey, Rua Mangaya, Apranka Sephonai, Apras Tem Femina Ganta, Aprakan Tete, I beheld Satan fall, I beheld Satan fall like lightning. Kiana Mpakakta, Este Meloria, Efras Tembarata, every restriction of darkness over the prophetic and apostolic move. We cast you down, we cast you down, we cast you down, we cast you down. Let the prophetic river flow. Parona. Yegamba, Aranta Tarata. Abras Kabamantaria, Efren Semenai, Aruagampaya, Eregentwana, Ezansara, Abras Tempona, Kayelandai, let the two leaf gates be open, let the two leaf gates be open, Yenielembai, Kapababalanta, Abras Tempomanta, open the gates, open the gates, and the righteous may enter this gates of the Lord. Yaguane yala ha, Roman bata, Roman gazela, Aila rune yaha, Yaga baba balanta, Rantena, Rantena, Astalama, Astalama, Abrosefa manta, Abra baba balanta ni, Ruatanda, Ruatanda, Astena manta ta, Abombe yala ha. 
I beheld Satan for Coriele Moria Arada da da Arada da 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 Arada da 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 Arada da 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 Arada da 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 Ia na ma ba 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 Ia na ma ba 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 I beheld Satan for Comash Kelaranda Abrastema Abraham Vena, Akansose, Isaila, Isaila, the friends of Babalanta, Brass Antenna, Brass Antenna, Brass Antenna, we cast you down, we cast you down, Abo. Let the river flow. Yegen Dantara. Rapa Baba Babalanta. Abrasa Baba Balanta. Ereke Tuana Maha. Abras Baba Mena. Aruaka Babalanta Bara. Araka Tatata. Araka Dasaria. Ebrasenfa. 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 Skabome Tai. Gloria Magayeta. I beheld Sedafo. Holara. Horiamante, Horia, Yahadela, Hey, 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 Life-giving river, 
Oh, let me flow right here, right now. As the river flows, it begins to bring every dead thing to life. The life giving river. Oh, let it flow right here, right now. As the river flows, it begins to bring every death into life. The life-giving river, oh, let it flow right here, right now. Yagadada, 
Yagadada, Yagadada, Yagadada, Yagadada, Asta, Ta, 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 We bless you, Lord. 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 We bless you. We bless you. Mighty man in battle. We bless you. Come here. Frasi San Feme Man Lara. Braskon and Daiti. Zipara Sesenu. Sesoni Amanga. Ingahanga Zazunzi. Verine Sena. Braso Fandamike Landera. Emiogon Vanzaris. Vanzani na Marata. Verieno. Verieno Manga Zazaris. Seba Maha. Seba Manga. We bless you. We ask that you will adopt this gathering tonight. Let the spirit of adoption rest upon this meeting. Let your claim be established over this gathering. Let this meeting be made one with the one going on in your presence. Let there be one God, one Spirit, one Father, one Preacher. Have your way. Do your will. Fulfill your pleasure. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Would you please be seated briefly? Praise the Lord. Can you just speak in tongues for two minutes where you are at? Yeah. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Megazi. Megazi. Mahu kagda hati. Ubaire hesunosis. Venian rahadi. Bonzoso. Bonzoso nsai teke mo. Teke mialan hati. Suduna. Akta mando. Vriste. Medilu ruhu nzusi ya mabakati. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, welcome to church tonight. And um, I'm sure that your life and your portion will not remain the same hereafter. In Jesus' name. Amen. I've been tracking 
the the move of God's spirit, especially this week, and um, I've been watching to see the way it turns. And I can say that the spirit of the Lord has been very consistent about the emphasis and the priorities that um, we are having during the course of the week. Today I had to pray so long to check if there is something I need to take note of that is not already captured um, in my awareness and consciousness of what he wants to do. I think it was a little bit difficult today. It was about um, maybe 26 minutes there about before four that a lot of things became clarified and also reinforced. Amen. So I'm going to build very briefly and then I will move. Proverbs chapter 8. The book of Proverbs is so, so rich, so diverse, uh, so all-encompassing that if God gives you an entry point into something that he is doing, that uh, you'll be just, you'll be so, so, so glad. Praise the Lord. Proverbs chapter 8, we were at verse 8. And um, if we read from verse 6, it says, Here, for I will speak noble things, and the opening of my lips will yield right things. For my mouth will utter truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing twisted or crooked in them. They are all straight to him who understands and right to those who find knowledge. Receive my instruction and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than corals, and nothing that you desire compares with her. I, wisdom, I dwell with prudence, I find knowledge and discretion. The fear of Jehovah is to hate evil, pride and arrogance, and the evil way, and the perverse mouth I hate. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have might. Praise the Lord. If you look at verse 12, you're going to see the stock, the merchandise of wisdom. Say, I dwell with prudence and I look for knowledge and discretion. And then there is a contrast, say, to hate pride, arrogance, and the evil way, and the perverse mouth, I hate. Then he went on to say that counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding, I have might. So that everything and anything that the man is looking for in this life, that um, the devil wants to grant and recommend alternatives. If you follow the path of intimacy, you're going to find them. If it is power, in fact, the, the ratio of strength that comes from the Lord compared to the one you get in your humanity is 1 to 10. The ratio is 1 to 10. So scripture says, a man of wisdom is better. He's stronger than 10 mighty men who can take cities. Just one man who has been established in the counsel of God. The weight of that man, the, 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 the 
possibilities of that man uh, is one, the ratio is one to ten. So if you are going to move uh, and make critical headways in life, the pathway of intimacy is the sure part. You're going to find knowledge. You're going to find discretion. You're going to find a prudence. You're going to find counsel and sound wisdom. You're going to find understanding. By the time you get to verse 15, it tells of a journey uh, that opens up based on the choices we have made. If a man goes on the path of flesh, the path of darkness, and all of that, uh, he is going to come to a point where he will be needing certain things in life. And if you go through the path that wisdom is recommending, you also get to, you're going to get to that point in life where you will now enter into a status. This is what happens. He said, by me, kings reign and rulers decree justice. 16. By me, princes rule and nobles all who judge righteously. I love those who love me. And those who seek me diligently will find me. Intimacy requires intentional cultivation. But go back to verse 15. Whether you like it or yes, if you... Uh, a man, a woman, as life happens to you, you are going to come to that point where you will need to reign in life. And your priorities until now will determine the kind of weapons and the kind of tools you have at your disposal. But if you are going to enter into your ordination as a king, Scripture says it is the glory of God to conceal a matter. But it is the honor of kings to search them out. If you are going to come into that, cap that, that your capacity as a king, where you begin to search matters out, one of the equipments that you need are the things that will be fitted into you in the place of intimacy. Matters of prudence, wisdom, sound counsel sound wisdom, counsel, understanding, knowledge. When a man stays in the place of intimacy, all of these changes and fittings are going on he may not even know. Moses before, see now I'm talking about Moses. I determined from within not to call Moses because if I mention Moses, it will look like he's up there and he's just an exceptional case. All right? But by and large, the change that will happen to you, you may not be conscious of it. I remember 2010. We were making a transition from fasting to fasted life. Okay? What did I say? We're making a transition in from fasting. You know, we fast. Now we are going to shift from fasting to a life, a fasted life. And uh, the first shot was to, we were on um, a 70 days fasting that became 180 days. And it wasn't much. You fast from 6 a.m., anything from 12 noon, you can if you want to eat an elephant, go ahead and eat an elephant. And we're building 6 to 12, sometimes 6 to 2, other times 6 to 3. We kept pushing and kept pushing and kept pushing. A time came where my own personal experience in that bunch, uh, the people that I was more in touch with their experience were the male folks. I was very not too close with too many ladies. My wife used to be in that bunch, but I wasn't close to her to know what God is doing in your life as part. Are you having visions and all of that? The change that was taking place was so organic that 
when scripture says that lo, I am with you always, all right, I can tell you that it's not a figure of speech. There are many preachers that are reducing the word of God to literary stuff and all of that. Whereas God is moving, God is moving from, from figures of speech into literal application of what he has said. So that you can sit down alone in the office, but you are not alone. And I'm not saying you are fit. It's not fit. This is not fit I'm talking about. I'm talking about reality and experience that if somebody comes around, they just know that they are bumping into other people, persons other than yourself. Now, this change is happening gradually. You may not even know until somebody tells you something about what they experienced when they came around. Then you find people coming around. You don't even know why they are coming around, but they know why they are coming because they are in touch with certain kind of experiences any time and every time they come around. And as you begin to engage... Did you see that it is not a difficult thing for a person, for someone to fast from 6 to 12? Is it hard? Sometimes you are not even fasting and then you forgot that you've not eaten till around 3, 4, that about. But you just decide that, okay, let me skip breakfast. No breakfast till further notice until heaven gives a nod, no more breakfast. And then the consciousness, you are building the consciousness and the practice of the presence of God. And the time comes where you, it, beco it becomes so, 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 so intense that you just know that you know that you know that you are not alone. And there is no one that can convince you otherwise. And all of this happens as we begin to build and to construct. One of my our pastors here, he was telling me a story. We we're just talking, and he told a story that resonated deeply with me. And while I was in the office praying, the, the memory came back. Uh, he discovered that the wife asked him one day, say, why is it that you want to correct me about everything? If I need to put, maybe pick a cup from here and put it in this place, you want to show me how to do it. If I need to put on my shoes, you want to show me how to, everything I want to do, you want to show me. And he told her, that is why you are becoming wiser. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. So that because of this engagement, your steps, discretion is becoming a controlling force in your life. That the people, your leaders, the people that trust, that, that you work with, they trust your judgment any day, any time. They, they may not give you details about what needs to be done, but they know that there is a spirit at work in you and the concentration of that spirit has become so robust that it cannot but sponsor right steps, right decisions, right counsels, right emphasis, pay time. And you may not know when the thing shifted from the gearings. You know, when you are inside light, you don't see darkness. All right? But when someone is inside darkness, he sees you who is inside light. And that is the working of God to keep you focused on what you should focus on. From Monday, I said, I'm feeling the pain of life that is being lived, that is not building up. The man is now married. He is a married man, but he cannot transition to become a husband. The lady is now a married woman. There are persons that when I see them, I call them married man. Because you have a journey. That you're a married man doesn't mean you are a husband yet. That you got married as a sister. I say, ah, I declare you husband and wife, it doesn't mean you become, you have to journey. And this are, there is a life that fits you with all that it takes. You find all the discourse and all the calls, the appeals to intimacy that was being made from verse 1, 
when we go to verse 15, now kings have to reign. And all that is being recommended and being put forth is all that you need to now reign. Say, by me, kings reign. So you find men progress and they, they, they don't get to measure up to the demands of God for their lives and the requirements of God for their own destinies. Because when you don't build right, you're going to have those deficits. I don't know if you get what, get what I'm talking about. Do you understand? I, I was meditating in the office whether to shift and to change my preaching mode to abstracted kind of preaching or I should stay on the lane where uh, I can be in, be in touch with you and uh, you are in touch um, with what I'm saying. I can, yeah, it, it looks sweet. It sounds better that way, but uh, we are laboring on people and with people. Say, by me, kings reign. Now you're going to watch, you're going to see verse 15. Say, by me, kings reign and, ru and rulers decree justice. Hey. All right, let me, let me tell you why this is a big thing for me. When I joined Remnant Christian Network in 2007, the first contact that was held, if you see Apostle Aramia, our father in the Lord that time, he was so lanky and slim. Okay? So much so that um, maybe physically, you can put us in the same age demography, at least the range. One of the things that amazed and astonished me was the fact that the brain box, the engine, the operating system was older than the body. For many years, I saw the different graces that God put on his life. The first one that is obvious at the time is the, 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 the piercing. The, hey, hey, how do I put it now? The power of conviction. When he ministers, you are so pierced in the heart. And that one is a tool for revival. I saw what it produces. But back end, I said, I seen a life that is just so organized, a life that is so in keeping in step with times, seasons, and everything. And for three years, I began to pray. I didn't really want the revival aspect because somehow in a measure I had it before I got to know him. But for three years, the prayer was, Lord, give me the wisdom you have put on this man. And as time goes on, you get to see the advantage of getting these things right in their time. You may need to read, okay, this is church, let's read. Verse 17, say, I love those who love me, and those who seek me diligently find me. Riches and honor are with me. What are the things that people look, go around to look for that made them not to have time for God? Is it not money? The summary of that for you, look, hear him in nice money. You know, money answered all things. If you get money, you can get a house. If you get money, you can get a good car. If you get money, that lady that was telling you that let me pray about your proposal, she will tell you that the angel of the Lord appeared to her last night because there's Malachi. See, <laughs> Lord, forgive me. <laughs> you know, money can, money can activate the will of God very fast, though. You don't know. Hello? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. He said, riches and honor are with me. What was the major bone of contest, contention? Now, so we could a day. I just want to do something for my life and all of that. When you get these priorities right, 
you see that that product, what people are looking for, they are with what you have. Enduring wealth and righteousness. You don't know the people that have what you are hoping to have who are bleeding in places you don't know. That man is a guy. If, 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 if I can just get a tithe of what this person has, I will be fine. <laughs> that man, when he looks at you, he wished that he has what you have. You find riches, but a violated conscience. Riches, riches, but fear and terror. But you're finding riches, enduring wealth, and righteousness. Say, my fruit is better than gold, even fine gold. And my yield than choice silver. It has always been a lie, the things that distract you from the presence of God. Not one of them is real. Not one of them. I was, you know, when Reverend George Agbike was around, we used to talk. Those times, if you look, when I dress to church, the belt I use is this belt that has paper. They put paper, this um, straw board inside. So when it begins to go bad, you know, then you begin to shift the head of the belt from front here. You put it to the side here so that you, everything can cover it. And it looked like we didn't have nothing. Was it suit you are looking for? Was it clothes and all of that? And I see that when a man focuses on intimacy with God, the things that were even an issue with you, they, no longer, they don't count. They never counted in the first place. If you say trekking, there has been trekking, but those things, they, it, it didn't matter. Where is the trekking? Say, oh, I don't have clothes. Then I'll stay with Jesus. Stay with Jesus. What did I say? Stay with Jesus. Sometimes I dress to church and then after meeting some good people who are concerned about my life, they come and tell you, be, be using this one more. See, be, what they're trying to say is you have, been, you have been dressing off. Not knowing that I was a guy man before I handed over to Jesus. Then, I was the one that used to toast ladies for my friends. This, <laughs> I don't know what Jesus Christ did with this mouth. That is, it is not like before. Lord, thank you. <laughs> one of those times I went to toast a lady for one of my, my boys. And then when I, finished toasting, when I finished toasting the lady, the lady heard all that I said. Then she looked at me and said, Tony, if you are the one they are doing this to, how will you feel? She wanted me to toast her for myself. <laughs> And now they are saying dressed like this. See, we handed over to Jesus. Yeah. And many times he says, stay here. Stay here, stay here. I've had moments in my life when I accuse God. Have you accused God before? Have you accused God before? <laughs> I know God has been good to you. Thank God for your life. <laughs> he has been so, so good. Before you call, he answers you. There are times where I told God, you are wicked. And the reason why you are doing what you are doing is because you are more powerful than myself. <laughs> I got a job where they are going to pay me in dollars. And I already calculated what I was going to do. To marry after three months without committee of friends. Then show up in church with vehicle that they climb, not the one they enter. You know the difference? May the Lord show you the difference. <laughs> there, are, there, are, there, are, there is moto and there is car. There is moto and there is vehicle. Then there are some that you enter. There are some that you climb. And then the ones you climb, when you, when you drop your, your left leg, from, drop your left leg, open the door, and then just... Don't talk. Even, <laughs> even if you are foolish, don't talk. People, they will be amazed at you. Just drop your left leg and then look around. Shake your head <laughs> and then turn back. I calculated, and the morning I was the morning I was meant to travel to Lagos. 
he came to me in the dream and asked me a question, where are you going? Where am I going? Where were you when I was packing my bag, my, my stuff were being washed and all of that? So when they say, yeah, I dress like this, dress like this, I just look, I say, well, we know how to dress well, we like nice dressing, but there is an emphasis we are being given. Because you can get to the place where you are, what, get what you are looking for, but you will not like it when you, when you find it. The children of Israel, they asked God, they, they made requests according to the loss and the cravings of their heart. Uh, when they got it, there was also leanness, leanness in their soul. In fact, one of the ways God had to help me because I was bent on going. Meet me in Lagos. Everybody is going to Lagos and they're coming back with new, new vehicles with the leather on the seats and all of that. I want to go there. And while I was insisting, he showed me a vision of one of a, a brother who had gone to Lagos and we are looking up to him. When he talks, he talks in millions. I saw a vision of this brother. He was inside the vehicle and the motorcade was just crazy. See the mobile police, they were, they were just moving like this on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side. Everywhere the pump was just crazy. And I was riding bicycle. You know, that time you are ashamed of showing up for you to be seen. And when I looked closely, I don't know how I looked, but I looked closely, my eyes pierced into the, the owner's corner where this guy was sitting. When I saw him, I saw his skin. You know eczema that has become like a map of the world? You know, ex okay, many of you don't know eczema. When eczema was a matter, you were, you were, you were still, no, I don't know, but those who know eczema understand what I'm talking about. I saw he looked so diseased, he looked so dried and all of that. And the moment I saw him, I was like, Chineke, no. what's happening? Then I called, I, when I pulled out of the vision, I called him, I said, Oga, this is what I saw. I saw you like this, I saw you like this. He said, my brother, be praying for me. And he started telling me things that I don't want to say with my mouth. When I saw that vision, my desire died. You can have what you are looking for in the natural and have leanness. Another guy that, you know, things happen to, there are things that happen around that comes to steer up the embers of inordinate passion. The drive to want to be in you. What other guy, while we were on campus, this guy has raised the dead before he became a student on campus. He was a member of our fellowship. He has raised the dead. Strong guy. But these same things, not getting your steps and your setups right, which only comes by intimacy. You know, have you met people that when you, maybe when you guys were much younger, you know yourself, you used to fast. This one was John, John Knox. You were uh, Father Nash or something. Whatever it is that the anointing and the inspirations you had at the time, you knew yourself according to the tenor of destiny. Then after seven years' time, you meet them. You are trying to relate with them according to the old covenants you guys have them. They are not coming up. And I see this guy. And when he sees me, he just, oh, He's still a pastor. He's a pastor. He's in ministry. The way he's trying to escape from my sight. Jehu says, it's your heart right with me as mine is with you. But you find, get, may the Lord lead you right. For this God is our God. Forever he will be our guide. If God guides you with his eyes, where they are going to in a hurry and having proofs, it will be your habitat. Yeah. While wisdom was calling to the sons of men earlier on, if you look, you will think it's an invitation to, to, to poverty and to just being a, a pauper. Only to discover that what you had was, it was it's more than gold. The value is far, far, far more than choice silver. Praise the Lord. And he says, my fruits is better than gold, even fine gold. And my yield than choice silver. I walk in the way of righteousness 
in the midst of the path of justice, that I may cause those who love me to inherit substance, and that I may fill their treasuries. I want to fill their treasuries. Everything that represents expression of wealth, greatness, abundance, I want to fill it. He didn't say I will give them treasure. Treasure is what you have. Treasure is where it, it is kept. And the commitment is not even with, to give you something, it's to fill you with something. One of the things that God will do to you, and of which you need to be conscious of, God will never leave himself without a witness in our lives. There is something called the ministry of example. So he will tell you, look at Abraham, your father. Look at Sarah, your mother. When I called him, I called him alone. Then I blessed him. I have seen the lives of our Abraham and the life of our Sarah in this house. And I can tell you, you can't be wrong with intimacy. In case it takes time, it is because what is coming with what you are going to have, there is something coming with what you're going to have. You're not just going to have riches. You have riches with righteousness. If you know the abominations that goes on in the finance world, you will not desire. If a, your uncle, who, 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 who is a wealthy man, gives you clothes, you know that that cloth has been corrupted, has been stained with corrupted flesh. You will not take. I tell you, you won't. And as you will not understand that un, un, unless you are from a wealthy family and God is not allowing you to take nothing for anyone. Because he knows. Because men always leave the predominant spirits at work in their lives on what they have. Naaman had leprosy as the predominant expression of darkness. When he brought his wealth and other things to Elisha, why did Elisha say no? And what did Gehazi get when he said yes? This man has what you think you need. But there is something in addition to that that you don't know. And just one, one wrong step, Gehazi jeopardized his entire lineage. If they are still alive, leprosy is at work in that family till today. Except such a man comes under the cross of Jesus Christ. Men will leave their spirits in their lives on what they have. And God wants you to arrive your destination with your conscience not violated. That he shows you a, a, a route. And the way Nigerians will say, say God to the tea. But the way God the tea, now so you go get rest at the end. Say mark the perfect man, behold the upright man, for the end of that man shall be peace. It is at the end of the journey you will know what really mattered in the first place. I was in the office meditating and I saw myself journeying from this world to heaven. Yeah, I saw myself journeying to heaven and the, the, the closer I got, the lesser of the things of this world I had on me. I don't want anything of this world to constitute an impediment between me and the master. There are certain things you cannot enter except you enter through the gates of righteousness. If your conscience matters at all. Look at verse 21. Say that I may cause those who love me to inherit substance and that I may fill their treasuries. 22 says, Jehovah possessed me in the beginning of his ways before his works of old. I was set up from eternity. Intimacy is what 
sets up your ways for you. You know, there are certain things that if you get them right, you will get other things right. All right? Yeah. I, I, I wrote those things here. I was supposed to talk about them on Monday, but um, after Monday, I, I couldn't get there. So um, it didn't, um, I didn't get to it looking at the move of God. Look at the things that God told me on Monday. He said, getting structures right, that is what happened here. That set up. Say, get structures right for intimacy. If you get your marriage right because you hear God and the leadings of God, you will not have black hearts every day. Many challenges we are having now, the root cause is not immediate, it's remote. In fact, many things going on All right, I want you to hear the words I'm using, okay? I'm not saying everything. I'm saying many things. Many things going wrong with people's lives is because they got certain critical things wrong. You didn't allow God to guide you. Say, you want to pray about the will of God. Oh, the will of God, pray? What if I pray about who to marry and God shows me one shot engine, one shot lady like that? <laughs> I don't know, I can't pray. If I pray now, God is always... It looked like <laughs> a sister, who's a lady whose dad, she got born again. The dad is a wealthy man, very wealthy. And um, a brother who, uh, I don't know, you know, when we give this example, they would just be asking, why, why must he always be this rich and poor? Why can't we have rich brother coming to propose to a rich sister? But that is how the story happened. This guy, he's a young guy whose dad knows how to prepare a boy to become a man. All that it will take for you to progress from a son, a man, a husband, a father, a king, a priest, a prophet, and all of that. The man raised this guy well. And he is in church under a pastor who knows his job. And this lady whose dad is also a very wealthy man also was there. And why this guy was praying, I, I hope you know that in church there is class. Abby, no matter how God leads you, brothers, there are some sisters you know how to propose to because they look like they are outside of your class. And they expect you to know. <laughs> and this guy prayed and God told him that sister is the one. He discussed with pastor. Many times pastors, you have to exercise faith to believe that this, thing, this brother uh, is actually the person that God is leading and all of that. So he said, okay, talk to her. And when he spoke to the lady, the lady, she was so shocked that this guy came to propose to her. She was so surprised. The, the first thing is, how, like, she was wondering, like, is anything wrong? Like, what is wrong with me? Like, how do I really look that this guy has the airphone tree and everything that God to come and propose? He said, God lead you. No matter how sleep worried dog, you don't know the bed of lion. <laughs> and while she went to discuss this matter with her friends, she was so unfortunate that the friends she went to discuss with their Holy Ghost sisters. Unfortunately. And then when she finished describing and then she didn't sell crocodile tears, I just can't imagine. I can't imagine. What does he think about me? They say, sister, have you prayed? And the lady say, pray? What if God says yes? <laughs> and of course, she went and prayed. Guess what God said? Yes. But when she married that guy, she discovered that is the greatest favor that God could have done for her outside of salvation. There are many things we have done according to class, not according to leading. I know a wedding, I heard about a wedding that took place in IBB Square that ended, is it three months or even the next day after the wedding? Have you, you have heard those stories, right? The reception has not finished when the wedding broke. Because two, two people of class without God, they locked horns.
And God told me to tell you, he said, if you get these structures right, if you get marriage right, for instance, you will not be praying as a woman that your husband come and begin to kick you and begin to say, oh, man, you know, it will not happen. Sometimes, as a married man, you just know that God is having a time with your wife. And you don't need to get close to her. You just know this season, there is something hovering around this woman that you need to stay clear and allow God to visit her. And whatever God is doing with her, God is doing something and God is jealous. He just needs her to himself at that time. It will take the structures that you've gotten right to bring understanding into your intimacy. Are you there? Say, if you get these structures right, there are rules you will move into. Oh. Is somebody there? Are you still listening? There are things that God will fit into you that is required for the next things that he is doing in your life. And in the place of intimacy, as you fellowship with God, he begins to give you emphasis, priorities. You read your Bible, oh my God. You read your Bible and every page you open to, you are seeing that God is against a particular matter. Earlier on, 2004, 252627, reading the book of Proverbs, I don't know how the strange man and the strange woman gets highlighted. Everywhere you read, you see the posture of God concerning the strange woman, concerning the strange man, and how he relates with those matters. And then a desire to purge those dispositions out of your own, your own heart begins to well up. God is doing something. Praise the Lord. Now, like us to read. He said, from, from the beginning before the earth was, this is uh, verse 23, um, I'd like us to move to verse 34 because I want to, I want to run. Verse 34 says, Blessed is the man who listens to me daily. The man that listens to me, watching daily at my doors, waiting at my doorpost. In the flesh, you will approximate and attain your least potentials. In the spirit, you will approximate and attain to your greatest potentials. Yeah. Waiting is one of the things that brings you into the capacity of the spirit of God for your life. One moment, I read um, Tongues Beyond the Upper Room by um, Kenny Hagin, of blessed memory. And in it, he told a story about a rich guy who he never made any wrong investment decision. Because when you bring proposal to him, and say, ah, this matter, this one, you go say, you go, you go, this one, they go pump him very soon. This particular crypto, they go pump him. You go pump. <laughs> The man will go indoors and go and pray in tongues. And then when he doesn't get the signal, he will leave you with your proposal. And the one you are not even recommending that he prays, and then this is what is entering. He will go there and you find it's easy. When you say, I will cost those that love me to inherit wealth. It is true. Like very, very true. Blessed is that man who listens to me, watching daily at my doors. One of the ways to strengthen and to build intimacy is daily fellowship. Can you say daily fellowship? Daily fellowship of the right nature. We eat daily, we sleep daily, we bathe daily. We should attend and minister to our work with God daily. And God is saying, that man is blessed. 
watching daily at my doors, waiting at my post. Give it to us in the King James Version, please. Verse 34 in the King James Version. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. Do you understand why the psalmist say it is better to be a, a doorkeeper in the house of God? It's not necessarily a place of being a pauper. It's a place of waiting. One thing that you get right from the Lord can account for 70% of other things that you will get right effortlessly. And there are critical things that you must get right after you get your salvation right. If you get your salvation right, you have to get your church right. You know, we have shop right. We also have church right. If you don't get your church right, if you don't get your shepherd right, you will not get your destiny right. There is a... You see, these days I want to talk less. I just want to just say things, summary in simple form. Hey, yeah. If you get your shepherd right, you will get other things right. If you get your church right, most times they, there is an atmosphere required to help you get things right. You may, you see, that is where atmosphere becomes stronger than discipline. I say, okay, I want to do 21 days personal VG on my own. Then after you do the first day, do the second day, the third day, you woke up at 3 a.m. and you discover you're on your bed. And you're angry. You're mad. Then you're like, okay, I broke. The way you break fast, I broke the night VG. You start again some other time and all of that. Now, that is you trying to be disciplined. Just imagine that we say, okay, we are holding 91 days VG here. And all that you need to do, you don't even have to be disciplined. Just come. You live in a room where you, you didn't plan to pray in the night, but you, you are living with two, three other guys that this one, by 11, he's already doing kikikinki. Then the other one is doing Oga, you will pray. Because if they do that for two, three days, then when you wake up, shame, shame will cover your face like this. Then you, even if you don't mean the tongues, you'll be doing your mouth like this. Your leg, you'll be shaking your leg and then be doing your mouth. Even if you are sleeping, boy, you don't want the shame. That atmosphere is stronger than your discipline. There are many persons that the reason why you got your marriage right was because you were in the right church atmosphere. In the father's house. They begin to see covenants. None shall want her mate. You are there just singing. You are great. Yes, you are. Holy one. You don't begin to do those things that choir used to do. Then the brother is there. If you didn't come to church, if you didn't come to RCN, many of you that are listening to me, if you didn't come to RCN, you know I've married your wife. And the reason why you got your marriage right is because you got your church right. Hello? Namba, you were in Lafia, right? There are many things you would not have gotten right if you didn't get this place right. I don't know what led, I don't know why you came, but you are here. He's an evangelist, doing great. Married to a very wonderful lady. That there are certain things that makes your intimacy, a, 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 it makes it a, a joy, fun, pleasure. And there are... Do you get what I'm talking about? Get critical things right. You know, the more you... Yeah, my lips are sealed. To get patterns right, how things are done, you will not know how serious the gravity of doing ministry in righteousness. 
Many persons are polluted, they are wounded because they were in the wrong place. You go to a church where, yeah, some things I don't just have to say them. There are pastors that come to me in this land and from other places they come, they come to see me. And then when, when, they are talking, when they are talking, you see that they are locked up in systems that have a great name but deeply polluted. See church money, church funds, the pastor is living large. And when you talk about it, you are touching the anointed. And the Lord says you should not touch the anointed. So I get to talk with pastors, young pastors, associate pastors, next generation pastors who are confused about what is right. Is it okay to be sleeping? With? A, 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 a pastor, a young pastor came and met me here, you know, he was recommended to see me because he was in a, a situation that was really bad. The man that ordained him into ministry, that, that, that also conducted his wedding, he wants to have sex with his wife. I, I'm like, excuse me. This is a young pastor under you. And if, if you are in the wrong place, you go teach, say, na so day, teen day. And many of you here, you, you, are, you came here, you are afraid of pastors because of the pastoral experiences you have had. And why the conscience is violated is because you didn't get critical things right. I had to go visit this guy with my wife. Went to the house. Sat down. See the wife. And they say, initially I, I thought that my wife is trying to, he thought his wife was an agent of darkness. Because he got married. Then the next, this young lady said, leave this church. We could leave this church. Let's leave this church. I was here serving before you came. Lawyer to my father in the Lord. Now you have come and then the next thing that will happen for everybody to know is that the moment he got married, the wife took him away from God. He didn't know what his wife was fighting not to let him hear. And then he told the, the wife told him he rebuked the devil and refused to believe. And the wife and the mother said, how do we talk to this guy now? How do we open this his ears to hear? And the, the trick was, let her cooperate with the pastor guy. He's an apostle. His name is an apostle. Cooperate with the apostle guy. Then they were stocking up all the messages, all the filthy things. The way, oh, I wish, I wish it was you I met before my wife. All manner of things. And then when they gathered evidence, this guy, only God knew why he didn't have a nervous breakdown. Get critical matters right and get them right early and on time so that you don't carry injuries and fractures that are not necessary. You may go to a place where the, uh, the man, when he speaks, he, he speaks with finesse. But that is, huh. as I was saying yesterday, the more you know what goes on in ministry, the less you want to be in ministry. Because the time comes where what the, the standards that even a non-believer will not violate, you find it being violated there. Get certain matters right. There are atmospheres that will make intimacy hard for you. That is why it is, it is better you spend 10 hours, 6 months praying to get what God is saying and then move on head on than to go and then hope that God will be intervening as we are going. Intimacy, this is one of the things intimacy will do for you. Intimacy will make, we I want to say some things and I'm feeling the pain. Can you say intervention? Say involvement. Intimacy will make you to need less of intervention and have more of involvement. You know the steps of the good man, they are ordered by the Lord. You want to go to Joss and God is saying, no, go to 
Ubolafo. Ubolafo is by the roadside. Joss is a, you know, and all of that. God is leading you. Because he knows that if you go this way, the realities you will encounter there. If you go down south, you encounter a lot of boreholes on the road. The potholes as you travel down south. This way is more. And as you go up north, the roads are smooth. Okay? Where the direction you travel determines what you encounter. Divine intervention is a description of the life of a man that is full of error and mistakes. If you trace it, that is what is there. Where instead of lead us not into temptation, you enter into temptation, then God save you. I almost let go. I was lost. He kept me. God's mercies kept me. So I wouldn't let go. While you are singing that song, Joseph is moving. Yeah. While you are singing, oh, God is a God of second chance. There is a place you are that intimacy will establish your work. Where God will bring you out of the miry clay and establish your feet on the set of feet on the rock and establish your going. The psalmist, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. What's the next thing you find the Lord doing? To, this is the Lord who is a nurse. Do you get that? Normally, I, I don't, I, I'm not sure. All my life, I think it's only once that a male doctor has injected me, given me injection. Even when they want to take samples, I used to frown. But when, if, if it's a lady, you are, you are ashamed of showing that you are feeling pain. You just, you pretend that you are a strong man. <laughs> but if it's a man, what if he used power, took the needle? <laughs> I'm afraid. A man does not paint the image of a nurse. Shepherding is tender. It's a nurture-based engagement. Care. Now the person who is your shepherd is you know the Lord. If you say, sit down here, you sit down there. And he's a shepherd. You're supposed to say, okay, when you say sit down, you say, okay, but what, 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 what if you, let's be open-minded about the matter. You know, Christians are, Christians are perishing because they're open-minded. God says this. Then you say, let's be open-minded. What if? Are you trying to say that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven? What about the billions of Muslims and other people? Are you trying to say that the good God, they are going to perish? They are going to perish. And it's not the first time. The Lord is my shepherd. Go to verse 2. I shall not want. Look at the next thing. Can you see that? Hello? Did you see that? You see the, the forcefulness of shepherding. He maketh me. If you need to be made to lie down, it means left to you. You don't go lie down. Left for you, you will not lie down. Say, so he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 15. You're going to see the, this experience in verse 2 here is not as cheap as it looks. It's in, it, it's in intimacy you begin to know the Lord. All right? That, okay, in RCN here, we have different, we have a very robust medical team. There are different nurses among them. There are different doctors and medical lab scientists and all manner of uh, medical professionals that we have here. But there is one of them that even if I'm sick and I need to take injection in London, if I have the means, I don't mind flying her to London to come and give me one injection and then flying back. Because when she comes, there's a way she, she's so careful that you don't even know, say, it will not pain you. Oh, oh, so what are you saying? Before you know what is, she's done. Now, whenever nurse peace is going to give me injection, I know that it's for good. 
One of my cousins, who is a nurse, gave me a drip. I almost died from the pain of the drip than from the sickness for which I was going to be drip. If was, I, I, I couldn't even, I couldn't hold it. My chest, I felt the pain on my chest. So if I needed to take anything that requires injection and is some person that around, I would take tablet or use my feet. There's a way you know the Lord, like our nurse peace, that whenever injection is coming, you know it's for good. Even though you will feel a mild pain, it's not because of the pain, it's because of the good. It is in intimacy you know that what, where God is leading you to is not going to grieve you. God will not give you anything that will grieve you. At that time, you begin to trust. I know him. I don't know the road. I don't know what lies in the future. But I know the one who is leading me there. And there are many things that we felt we thought, oh, we could have made better choices for ourselves. I was after a lady to marry. I wanted to marry. I was head over heels in love. Beg after, you no, know, Brother Tony, Holy Ghost brother, John the Baptist preacher, and all of that. When I told this lady, I want to do life with you. So let her pray about it. Then she took me to a committee of friends. And they finished discussing me and they said, no, you can't live in the house with this guy. He doesn't smile. He, he's always too serious. I begged this lady for four years. I said, give me a chance. She said, when you sweep your house in the morning, and then the next day you come, you see, see the signs of the broom for yesterday sweeping. You still sweep the house today again. I said, what I say I won't marry you. What is it about sweeping? I was, I was on the mat until I had a dream. And in this dream, I was married to her because I used my will to insist. And it wasn't too long after I got married to her, we were, this is our house, this is the bedroom. I saw the marriage bed, it didn't have a white bed spread, it had a blue bed spread, but we were already married, okay? The kind of dust I saw on the marriage bed it will kill me as a pastor. You know, when you travel, you leave your house for three years. You go abroad, leave your house for three years. You come back. They need to use like, for, like 10 days or 17 days to clean the house before you can live in it. I saw the house full of, the, the bed was so dusty. When I woke up, I was scared. And it was me in the vision. I was living with a, a, a family and I told the lady, um, we need to pray for a member of the church. <laughs> I didn't tell her it was this member. <laughs> So I saw a dream in which, I saw one of, the, one of the members of the church, I saw a dream in which the marriage bed was full of dust and the lady shouted, they said, Uncle, Uncle Tony, it's not a good thing, no. Hey, this is what I was begging to enter for four years. And in that dream, her mother was in my bedroom to try to explain and all of that. These are ancestral issues. God will not give you anything that will grieve you. What if I got it in two years? You see some things that you call delay. It wasn't delay. It was mercy in action. Mercy that will wear out your resolve until you become tired. Then when you become tired and say, I know they do marriage again. That is where the will of God shows up. They come and wake you up. You know, you don't awake in love until he pleases. Four good years, I was begging. Give me an opportunity. You don't know me. You know, there are some brothers that can love very well. The reason why they are hard is because they don't want to, they, they know what for. They know themselves. They know that if, if he loved this lady, even God, they need to use a huja megaphone to tell him to stop. So it better, it's better that you don't start than to start and not have control. That is why many of you sisters, you, you, you misunderstand us. Say the guy, this one, that is only prayer, 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 prayer. That guy can love. He is so romantic. More than you can ever imagine. You think the only thing he knows how to do is just to be speaking in tongues. He is hiding the capacity for, for, for affection. He is covering it with prayer. The thing is so sacred that he wants to, have, he wants to give it to the person that is really deserving. 
When I married my wife, I told her, they say I don't use to smile. Is it true? <laughs> they say I'm hard. Is it true? And I'm a very difficult. Is it true? Does it look like that? Look at me now. <laughs> I know many of you are, you are answering me in your heart. You are telling me it's true. <laughs> the Lord forgive you. <laughs> you need to know that land before I hit you because I have clarified over time that this one is open to the things that God is saying to him or he or she from my mouth and you need to pray that God will bring men and women around you who will tell you things the way it is do you get what I'm talking about people that will tell you things that the way you are going I'm seeing you you are around married women too much now. So what is your plan? Do you understand? Oh no, no, what are you planning to do? The way you are so friendly with married people's wives. What is the plan? And they sit you down, please let we see your there is something you are teaching these days. You are preaching some kind of revelation that we have looked, we have said the Bible, we can't find it. Come and teach us this thing. We want to understand it from your mouth now. And if you don't have such persons around your life, you're going to make a thousand mistakes, a thousand and one mistakes. And you know there is a way that cement right onto a man? That trap of resemblance, that deception of what looks like it, Satan we always plug such a man to it. And many times you need to allow God to tell you things the way it is. And the next thing, when God wants to talk to you, he decides the mouth he will use. Many of you think you are what God talking to you directly about the matter. If God does not talk to you directly, then you don't care. You are not worth it. He will come and tell you those things around. If you like, listen. If you like, don't listen. But the malleability of heart that makes a man to tremble at the word of God. That condition is maintained and renovated, kept fresh in intimacy. I believe with all my heart there are many persons listening to me and those who will be listening in hereafter who are in critical turning point seasons on their, of their life and God is insisting that they get it right. 
Yeah. And hence the emphasis he's bringing. Last week we heard about following Jesus and going through the dealings of God. And we're having all of this now. There is something God is preparing us for to get right. A pastor met me last week and he's having issues with his own senior pastor who is a member, a, a pastor with um, a big ministry, very renowned ministry. And this man, he is still money. And this guy who is like an associate pastor and then like a secretary or something, he had confronted him over the matter again and again and the matter is not, he reported the man to the state office and all of that, and they called the meeting, all of that. They say, Oh, okay, don't do it again, and all of that. Hmm. That man is confused. The pastor is wondering whether stealing God's money is right. Because he sees the big, big names that have the big, big things happening, and he sees those kind of stuff happening, going on. And God will insist with you to stay. He may get you to lie down. He will make you to lie down. And if you give God time, you will know that God is always right. What did I say? God is always right. If God says this is white, right, you will discover that he is always right. If he says stay or go, after some time, you will come to judge that God is always right. The matters of deafness is one of the things that the Lord will have me to bring to us. It is in the place of intimacy God cleanses our ears and purifies our hearing. Psalms 40 Verse 5. Many, O oh Lord, my God, are thy wonderful works. Which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are to us word, they cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Six. Sacrifices and offering. Thou didst not desire. Mine ears thou hast opened. Burnt offering and sin offering thou hast not required. Verse seven. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the books. It is written of me. Verse 8. I delight to do thy will, O oh my God. Yeah, thy law is within my heart. Look at what the kind of dealings that God begins to give to a man. He begins to open your ears. How did your ear become open to the language you speak as your language? The day you were born, if you were taken from the delivery room to Scotland, all right, as a tip man, as an Edoma man, a house man, if you were taken, you didn't hear anybody speaking your language, everybody that is around, nobody spoke no language, you will grow up languageless. If a child is born for 10 years, nobody spoke nothing to that child, that child will not have a language. But when the child is born, they begin to hear, Msu, Msu, Vahe. Come. And every time they say come, somebody moves towards the direction of come. And he hears go. Somebody is moving from that place. The ears are being opened to that language. And over time, the ears becomes the heart. that The, the ear that is a gateway to the heart becomes a reservoir of words that carry meanings. So when you say, as you stand like no ever vaccina, Somebody hears. The person knows what you are saying because as far as words are concerned, this particular utterance means this thing 
in that language. When you say glory a Deus, somebody who doesn't understand that language will be wondering, what is glory a Deus? But that thing has been an effective communication to the man whose language it has become because of the opening of the ears. When God is going to open your ears, he will speak to you. And he will keep speaking to you. He will keep speaking to you until you begin to understand the speakings of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing. And the more of a language you will know how to speak is going to be to the degree of your hearing of that language. If you have not heard like common server, you don't know what it means. And when you hear it, it will look like the person is just babbling. But the one who has heard it again and again and known what it is, every time he hears that, he just knows. I was, I was speaking in tongues one of those times here, and then somebody reached out to me online and said, you were speaking my language. Say, I didn't know you could speak my language. I said, I, I don't understand what you're talking about. I was Rika Bamboria Labranta. Somebody who Bambrata is a language has already received direction from the Lord. Maybe Bambrata means don't marry that man. <laughs> and why it is like that is because the speaker does not know you far away. And why is it that of all the tongues is Bambrata, 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 that you are going to the market Bambrata, Bambrata. You are sitting at Bambrata, you just know that God has settled your matter with Bambrata. Bambrata may not make any sense to my mind, but someone as far as natural, the language of men is concerned, the person's ears have been opened to Bambrata. And God is saying, I will open your ears. You see activity, sacrifices, and burnt offerings. People are doing your go baba or go, going up and down. Now this one, they happen. Now this one, that's what they did. Then God begins to open your ears, begin to speak to you. The first time he spoke to you, you thought it was your thought. Now this is it. When you are asleep in the night, God will speak to you a lot through dreams. But when you are awake, he will speak to you a lot through your thoughts. This thing I just said now will help you to have vest many precious things from the Lord. My ears you have opened. Then the next thing you see this opened ear dead man doing is he's looking for the will of God. And the reason why he's looking for the will of God is because his, his ears have been opened. I, I spoke about um, Isaiah chapter 30 verse 15. For thus said the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall ye be saved, and in quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. But what is the problem? You know, go agree. He goes, say, rest. He say, how? Now rest, now carry rich Lagos. Is it to sit down? Is it to be quiet? I will fulfill my destiny. Until you read the book of Proverbs chapter 8. And you see that all the things you want to hurry up, I can't forget when I, I, I went indoors for three days to fast and to pray concerning my marriage and not to, it's not about finding the will of God, it's about provisions for the will of God. And then I used my accounting mind to do a sketch of what the, the things I would be needing for my wedding. Then my salary was 15000 When I did my sketch, accommodation, everything like that, it was 925000 My heart, my heart, my heart left my heart. He came here. I was indoors when I was using my accounting brain. So at least let me know the size of the mountain I want to move. You know, faith moves mountain. Let me know how big the mountain is. When I saw 925,000, I made a mistake by dividing 925,000 by 15,000. And I described it was going to take me years to get married. I almost ran out. I was in Reverend Shala's house. I almost ran out. Then I just heard somebody say, calm down. Calm down. Now calm down, we carry Mary. Then I began to call the people that, that, that had a stake in my life. I say, I'm troubled. Please pray for me. My heart is really troubled. My heart is really troubled. And then God told me, say, I need that home more than you need it. And when I heard that, I could only process that thing, not by Rema, but in terms of finance. If you need the house more than me, then who should pay for it more? That's how I rested. And you know what happened that three days I was indoors? 
the only thing I was able to mutter from my mouth was, Lord, help me. And that Lord helped me was when I was on the road, on the way, leaving the room. Lord, help me. I couldn't talk for three days because I couldn't imagine where I was going to get 925000 and it was not comprehensive budget. I say, he needs a home more than, you, more than I do. If you need it more than I do, then that's rest for me. And the moment I got that, I left, not in a hurry to run. When I say I wanted to run to Lagos, these are the things that make people to run. When you see the needs, the legitimate needs around, you want to run into activities, into effort. And God is saying, in returning and rest, in quietness and in confidence. But the normal man will not agree with God. He will not believe God. He won't believe. It is until you stay with God and God begins to persuade your heart. Part of the progression of that persuasion is that if my life doesn't happen, I'm not the first life that is failing. Do you understand? Because you are not seeing anything good coming. You can't even believe it. You, you just, you're not even able to believe that God is able to make you a great man. It's so, okay, well, people fail serving God. There are, if you read the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 11, there are those who were destitute. There were those who were desolate. They, they were in, in uh, animal skins. So if your life just happened to be there, so it's not, you're not the first person. So any, anyhow, anyhow. All right? Then you begin to move to that place where you begin to become persuaded. That point of persuasion where God begins to show you things. What about Abraham? When God is saying, look to Abraham, look to Sarah, he's trying to persuade the man and he's trying to persuade the mind to believe him. God has an obsession to be believed. The moment Abraham believed God, God said, this man is a righteous man. The moment Abraham believed God, say he's a, he's a righteous man and he was credited to his account as righteousness. Believing God to be, God has an obsession to be believed. Believe. Believe. Way back, many years ago, Apostle will see us like this. He will come. He said, believe, believe. Do not doubt. Believe. Every time he says, believe. What should we believe? There is nothing, there is nothing to believe. And you are telling us to believe. Nothing to believe. And you are saying, believe. Believe what in? Believe. Do not doubt. Whenever he is going to enter his car or he is going to leave, he says, believe. Believe. Now I understand. I understand now. Sometimes you don't even believe, but God keeps your feet. He gathers your feet where you're supposed to be. Have you, do you know why it is the steps of the righteous that are ordered, not the brain of the righteous? Do you know why? If God leaves it to your brain, he will lose you. Say, God gave you brain so that you can leave him alone. Abi? That's what they say. Say, so you don't need to pray. God has given you brain. Why do you need to pray? Hmm. If God leaves it to your brain, that is why many of you didn't plan to be in Makodi. Makodi is the last place you wanted to be. Your head, you know, your head came last. Your leg was the one that came first. You just go, you're in Makodi, and then you don't know why you're in Makodi until over time you begin to gather reasons why you are here. Then you begin to fall in love with being here. And then when God is saying it's time to leave, now you begin to feel so sorrowful. Because you are beginning to fall in love with where God was in your life. And then there is a place that God is going in your life now. Because he has made you the kind of man he needs to be for where he wants to take you to. Amen. Isaiah 50. Never spirit bound. Isaiah 50 verse 1. Thus say the Lord. Because of time, go to verse 4. The Lord God, oh, go to verse 1. I want you to journey the journey that I've been carried on. Let me not make it simpler and shorter for you than I was. Thus said the Lord, where is the bill of thy mother's divorcement, whom, have, whom I have put away? Or which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you? Like, I'm not able to fulfill my project for your life, so I have to sell you to, you know, all of that. He's asking, is it 
to whom, okay, behold, for your iniquities have ye sold yourselves, and for your transgressions is your mother put away. Verse 2. Wherefore, when I came, was there no man? When I called, was there none to answer? Is my hand shutting at all that it cannot redeem? Or have I no power to deliver? Many times, the God in our hearts is the God we have made for ourselves, not the God of the Bible. The picture and the image of the God of the Bible is a God that is able. The doubts and the fears we have, they are, they are hinged on a God that is helpless, that you need to help him. You know, help us of God. God help those. Have you heard heaven, heaven help those who help themselves? Have you heard that? Say, ah, my brother, heaven helps those who help themselves so, and all of that. You are living with a God of your own imagination. A product of a misguided piety. Say, behold, at my rebuke, I dried up the sea. He's telling you, he's reading his CV, his resume to you. When I rebuke the sea, it dries up. I make the rivers a wilderness. This is God trying to convince you. Because you refuse to believe him, he's showing you the things he has done. I rebuked the sea and it dried up. The rivers became wilderness. Their fish stinked because there is no water and dry, died for thirst. I clothed the heaven with blackness and made sackcloth their covering. He's still talking to you about what he can do. And he's not understanding why you, a mortal man, can believe him. Believing him to allow him to choose your inheritance for you. The Lord had given me, in the midst of all of these doubts, this is the kind of man I want to be. As I said, the Lord had given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He wakened morning by morning. He wakened my ear to hear as the learned. So in Psalms 40, verse 6, God opens my ears. And I told you how God opens ears. We, myself and my wife, we speak a lot of English at home. And when my dad calls, he speaks Idoma. And when I get my kids to greet him and to talk with him, he's speaking Idoma to them and they are they don't know what to say. And then we are telling them, when Baba say, Abba Hole, they will tell them, tell them to say, Mhoe. And they will say, they are wondering, they don't even know what they are saying because they don't know what was said to them. Do you get what I'm saying? And my dad will say, teach them, teach them Idoma, teach them. So my daughter will say, ah, Baba say you should teach me Idoma. So teach me Idoma now. I want to learn Idoma and all of that. So we keep saying certain things in our language. The more they hear, they know the meaning based on what we tell them. The meaning is then they are now able to respond on certain grounds and all of that. So when God is opening your ears, he opens your ears by speaking. Do you get what I'm talking about? And here he's saying, every morning, what God comes to do is, he comes to open my ears. And when he opens my ears, he opens my ears with words. And then he opened my ear to hear as the learned. Verse 5. The Lord had opened mine ear. And because of that, I was not rebellious. Neither turned away my back. This day and time, the seasons we are entering into as a body of Christ, the church of God, we need our ears awakened. And God does it. Morning after morning. What does he do? He awake. Do you know that a sleeping man and a dead man at a level they are all vulnerable. Where I got that wisdom from is when David went to carry Saul's water jar and his sword. You know what happened? They were asleep. 
See the description that David gave concerning Saul. He's a man of war. Like, like lion. Like eagles. But when he sleeps, all of those abilities are disabled. And one of David's men said, I will strike him once. This is a giant of a man. But because he is sleeping, anybody can deal with him. And that is how the, it is with the spirit of man. If your ears are asleep, many persons are awake physically, but their ears are asleep. And one of the cry that we must bring to the Lord tonight is, Lord, one, open my ears. You see, in the book of Psalms, the ear was opened. In the book of um, Isaiah, the ear was awake. So, the opened ear, the, the need for open of ear is more serious than the need for awakening of ears. When a man is deaf, if you speak to him, he won't be able to hear. So the first thing to do with the, he with the speaking is healing. You heal the deaf ears to speak to the ear. But when a man can hear but he is just sleeping, all that needs to be done is for him to be, you just tap him. I read some researches by scientists and studies that when people are sleeping, if you want to wake them up, don't use words. Just tap them and all of that because when you speak to them, they associated some kind of brain conditions to all of that, you know, and all of that. But I'm talking about he hearing. Is your ears deaf? God needs to open it. I don't have time to go into the things that deafen ears. But Jesus Christ said, Be careful how you hear, be careful how you hear, because with the same measure you hear, it will be given to you. I'd like us to pray tonight that men and women will rise up in this assembly who will begin to hear the very words of God. Yesterday, the Lord was bringing to us the fact that He wants to purge our lips because the Lord has something to say and is looking for the mouth through which to speak. Today, the Lord has something to say and is looking for the ears to whom to speak. He can speak through you, but he wants to speak to you. Would you please rise up? Say, Lord, open my ears. Open my ears. Open my ears. Open my ears. Very quickly. Lord, open my ears. Is somebody crying to the Lord tonight? Sacrifice and offering you do not desire. But my ears you have opened. God is speaking and he's looking for men and women to be intimate with. He's looking for that man, that woman that we have an open ear to hear what he is saying. Way back we sing, the Lord has something to say. Listen, listen. Pay great attention because the Lord has something to say. But now God wants to deal with deaf ears and to awaken sleeping ears. Say, awake all down that sleep it. There are many deliverances that God will deliver to people and persons personally. There are things he will say to us from the pulpit, but there are many more things he wants to say to you, and he needs your ears open. Yes. Lord, open my ears. Open my ears. Open my ears. There is a way God does that. He is the one that made the ears. He's the one that made the mouth. He can solve the issues with them. If you see the miracles of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ healed all the parts of the human body. He healed a madman. He healed a paralyzed man. He healed a crippled man. He healed a blind man. He healed deaf men. 
He healed dead men. He healed everything of a man. And if your own part is that your ears are dead and deaf, God wants to open it. And if you are inactive, your ears are sleeping. God is speaking, but you can't just pick the frequencies of God. God wants to awaken your ears. And you can make that a prayer tonight. Lord, open my ears. Kerambabalante. Leraga ta 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 ta. Verekentenia barande bro. Hele da 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 da. Maria kababalante pre namazai. Rapatata rapatata. Sai kababalante. Brason fentami. You can't be. You can't talk about intimacy. You can't drive in intimacy if you are deaf in your hearing. If your ears are deaf. God is speaking, but you cannot hear. Isaiah 42, he said, Who is deaf but my servant? Who is blind but my servant? Yes, no. Kabaratena. Brastanfela Kaparis. Kayande Boma. Levan Farata. Espamalande Brante. The sleeping man is a man that God used to speak to. But right now you can't hear him anymore. Before this time, you are always abreast with all that God is doing. Before a matter happens, you have heard it from the Lord. You have received it. But now, this get to happen before you know your ears are asleep. Your ears are asleep. When the happening surprise you, you get surprised by the things that happen. Your ears are asleep and God needs to awaken your ears morning by morning. He awakened my ears and I hear like the learned. God wants to speak. God wants to guide. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. For this God is my God forever. He will be my guide. He wants to lead you. He knows where you will find green pastures. He will knows where, he knows where you will find. Uh, he will know the still waters, uh, the breakthrough that will not bring trouble and corruption. Uh, he knows where to lead you. You are troubled. You are becoming weary and tired. Uh, but God wants to lead you in the way of peace. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I want to gather you. Let the mother chick gather her chick, but you would not. Say all that you will know, the thing that makes for your peace in this thy day, in this thy day, in this thy day, there is something that will bring you peace. There is something, there is a direction, there is a counsel, there is an instruction I will give to you that will bring peace to your life. Oh yes, oh yes, I am not wasting time as I call upon the Lord, I'm not wasting time, I am not wasting time, when men are going on, deaf in their fears of life, I am waiting until God unplugs my ears, every blockade, every closing of my ears, let them be open right now. Babalante, Rege de 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 de, Kerie kebelen tu abara, Aya bababalanda, Brasen fakabonte maina. Many of us, our ears are deafened by social media hypes. Our ears are deafened by all the lies that goes out there. The reason why you feel God is not faithful to you is because you are looking at the wrong thing and hearing the wrong thing. Asaf said, truly, God is good to Israel. But as for me, as for me, my case is different. God is not faithful to me. It's because he's seen the wrong thing, hearing the wrong thing. Lord of 
over my ears. Every deafness, every deafening spirit, come out of my ears, come out of my heart, come out of my heart. Let my ears be open by force and by fire. When you are much younger, God tells you things ahead of time. Way, way, way back. You know things three years before they happen. Five years before they happen. Now, it is no longer the same. What is going on? The ears are sleeping. Sleeping ears. Blocked ears. Deaf ears. Dead ears. Oh God, quicken right now. Yeah, Cabo Lide. The ministry of accuracy. The ministration of accuracy is what the Lord is bringing. When you hear, you will say, Lo, it is written of me in the volume of the books. It is written concerning me to do your will, oh God. I'm not going to do what is happening around. It's not what is raining. It's not what is trending. It is what is written concerning me. I want to do. Yes, yes, yes. Elara Demos. Lara Dienema. Hey, 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 hey. Put your right hand on your chest. As you pray, put your right hand on your chest. More gone by. Last night while I prayed during the video, I had the Lord telling me the words activations. I had the Lord saying activations. 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 Yebo mighty. Yebo mighty. Yebo mighty. Sebo Bolanta. A prostomo Montenga. A venemon Cambera. A lendo Bobolanda. A prambena mia. A riegen bomba. A riegen bomba. A prastem fama. Rambenaita. A prante. A prante. A prante. A prante. Cayenta Valara. A yade. Yes, let my ears be open to hear the inaudible, to see him that is invisible. Yes, Lord, day unto day, utter a speech, night unto night, the show for knowledge. See, Bobo Bolanda, bra, bra, so faint, Melaya. There is something God will tell you about your children for six years from now, for ten years from now. There is something God will tell you about your finances, about your ministry, about your family. There is something God will tell you up front. to hear God on the go. I want to hear God on the spot. Moment by moment hearing of the law. Moment by moment. Every moment. When the rules of the game change. I want to be aware. I want to be aware. Paul said, Sas, I told you, you shouldn't have taken it on Crete. I knew the journey was going to be with a lot of damage. But now, the angel of the Lord, whose I am and who I serve, he stood by me last night and he spoke to me. Say, Paul, I have given to you the lives of the man with you. Be of good chase in the midst of crisis. Paul heard the voice of God in the midst of confusion and fear. He heard the word of the Lord and he said, Be of good chase. Eat and drink because the Lord. That spoke to me. Said there shall be no loss of life except of the sheep and of the leaden. And I believe God 
that it shall be as he has told me. Where there is fear, there is trouble, there is terror, your heart will not be moved. Your heart will not move because you have heard the voice of Jehovah. Open my ears. Open my ears. Open my ears. Lord, give me an hearing ear. He said that you, they are going to bring you before leaders, rulers, to be a witness. Say, don't, don't, don't meditate what you will say. Because at that time, the spirit of your father, he's going to be telling you what to say. At that time, Jesus Christ told Peter, said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. I want to hear the voice of God. I want to hear the speakings of God in accent clear and still. I want to hear God without ambiguity. Oh my God. Lord, push my ear. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. 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 Hey, I want my ears open. I want my ears open. So that when genuine seekers Come and say, what is the Lord saying? My ears are open to the mouth of God. My ears are open to the heart of God. Connected to the very heart of God. I don't want a man to follow my hearing and be destroyed. So when I say, God is saying so, you follow to go and meet your Waterloo. No, 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 no. I want to pass the men and women into life, not death. Oh, yes. Where is your presence? Where is your fragrance? What are you saying now? What are you saying now? Yes. More than day the watch for the morning. So my soul cry out for you. It is not a man to direct his steps. I need a guide. I need a lead. Be my lead. Be my guide. Be my strength. Be my song. Lord, my soul says yes. My soul says yes. My soul says yes to your will. Lead me. Lead me in the way that I should go. Lead me, Lord. We are your people. We are the sheep of your pasture. Lord, lead. Yes, Lord. Yes. Megaba. Venita Rama. Aparte. Periene Ndasa. Never pray. Jesus told his disciples, So when you stand before the rulers who bear witness of me, say, I'm going to give you a mouth and a wisdom. I will give you. Your creation was not complete as far as destiny is concerned. There are things that God will fit into you in salvation. There are things He will fit into you in discipleship. There are things He will fit into you as you obey. 
there is a measure of the Holy Spirit given to those that obey him. That is higher than those that are born again. Can you pray and say, Lord, give me an hearing ear. There is a book I read around 2004 or so by Larry Lee, The Hearing Ear. And in that book, he spoke about vision about the man that the man's ears is so big in the spirit. You know, this ear lobe is needed. If it's so small, wind will not allow you to hear. The bulldog, have you seen a dog? If a dog wants to hear, they are always turning the antenna. It is to trap sound. And in that vision, he said, this particular man of God, the ears the man has was an extremely big ears and it is responsible for the accuracy of his reception. Can you pray and say, Lord, give me the hearing ear. I believe God. I believe God. Last night while we pray, I, I heard the words activations. I was trying to place it. Where are you talking about? Is he a meeting, whatever? But while I ministered and about to wrap up, that thing came back again. And I believe God wants to activate the hearing of someone. And I can tell you, it's a very sweet thing to hear God. It's so sweet. It is so, so sweet. It's so comforting. It's so reassuring to know that God will speak to you here and now. Can you pray? Say, Lord, give me the hearing ear. And I'll pray a very simple prayer. And we're done. Are you praying the prayer? Give me the hearing ear. The way you will give a mouth and that you will give wisdom. In one day, Joshua became filled with wisdom because Moses laid his hands on him. In one day, and God said, I will give you an additional ear. So that let him that had an ear hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. The people who had an ear are those that have been given here ears. And there are things that God will say only to ears that is given. That ear that is given, there are things God will say. And only the given ear will recognize God will say. What God is saying. Can you pray and say, Lord, give me an ear. Give me an hearing ear. All right. Whenever you are out on line on ground, close your two ears. Father, in the name of Jesus. By your spirit. We command these ears to open. Be opened. To the voice of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every deadness of hearing deafness of hearing and sleeping ears be quickened in the name of Jesus Christ. Very quickly, you used to hear the Lord expressly, like expressly clearly before, but now it is not like that anymore. You don't hear again. Things the things take you by surprise. Run out very fast. Run out very fast. There was an advantage of hearing your heart. That you hear things your spirit man hears in dreams, hears in visions that you hear clearly. Things don't take you by surprise. But now it's like you are so flat so flat, so flat that things can just come so close to you like this and you are not aware. Please, 
Pray in tongues. Pray in the spirit. It's an atmosphere of divine walking that we are in right now. I'm just carrying out an instruction. But there is an atmosphere of divine walking that God is going to open your ears and you will no longer be daft. You will no longer be a stranger to... If God passes, you will know. If God is going to come to the land, or you will know. You will hear it. You will hear. You will hear! My pastors, please, I'd like us to lay hands on them very fast. Just touch them very, very briefly. Just touch. Those of us out here, you are online. The way to come out online is to just raise your hand up. That's a faith obedience. The anointed, please. Pastor Nangba, let's come and let's be very fast. Just lay hands on them. Lay hands on them. That advantage that puts you 10 steps ahead of Satan. That advantage God gave to you right from a young age. You hear clearly, you see clearly, and everything is sharp. But now it's no longer so. Put, lay hands on their head. Lay hands on their heads. Let those ears open. We restore those gifts. We dig up those wells. Those wells. We command those wells that the Philistines have stuffed with earth, stuffed with the flesh, stuffed with everything. We command those wells to open in the name of Jesus Christ. Open! Open. Yes. You will hear voice, the words of God. You will hear the voice of God. You will hear the sounds of his presence. This is what the Lord is telling me. You know, intimacy has two routes. The first route of intimacy is when God summons you. Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 3. Say, draw me. Draw me and we will run after thee. The king has brought me into his banqueting hall. And the next one is, I will enter his gates. I will enter his courts. You are going to begin to experience divine summons. All right? Specifically, I see someone that God will be using sounds. It's not with this ear. The sound is with the ear, not this one, to invite you into his presence. That move of God will come. You will hear it. And then as you begin to yield, the atmosphere will carry you. The atmosphere will carry you. You will hear his summon. You will hear his invitation. You will hear him saying, come up, Hida. Come up. Come up. Let those ears be opened. Let those ears be opened in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout hallelujah. Can you do